Good day everyone, I'm Jasmine Dartigawin and for today, we will have a small talk about globalization, mainly transnationalism and migration. So together with me is... Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jezebel Tumaliwan. Hello, my name is Trixie Lenot. Okay, so before anything else, we will give you a glimpse of what transnationalism and migration is by giving their definitions. So transnationalism refers to the diffusion and extension of social, political, economic processes in between and beyond the sovereign jurisdictional boundaries of nation states. Next is the migration. Migration involves the movement of people from one place to another with intentions of settling permanently or temporarily at a new location. Migration is often associated with better use of capital at both individual and household level and with better access to migration networks. People may migrate as individuals in family or in country. Okay, so for us to have more idea and a deeper understanding about this topic today, we have a special guest who will answer some questions and share some experiences about the topic. So let us all welcome Ms. Cesbon Hi, thanks for having me. Okay. So now, um, are you ready to answer the questions for... <sighs> I think I am. <laughs> um, thank you for giving us the topic. Okay, so now let's move on to the first question. So the first question is, from what country you migrated? Uh, I migrated from the Philippines to Australia. Okay, so next is, how long have you been in Australia? I've been living here and calling this country my new home for about six years now. Oh, quite long enough. Okay, next. So what is your job or work there in Australia now? Um, so I've always been in finance and accounting. Um, I used to work with um, EY, which is the equivalent for SGV in Australia. Uh, I've been working with EY as an auditor for about a decade, for almost a decade. I left as a senior manager um, in the Melbourne office early this year and now moved into like a financial reporting lead role for a listed um, law firm. Okay, so next question is, what is or are your reasons for going to another country? Easy money. But feeding aside, though, um, moving to Australia wasn't my first choice. Um, it was just a very good opportunity that I couldn't pass. When I went and got the job in Australia, I was so looking forward to living in London. Um, but I was offered a job here, and I thought to myself, maybe it's easier for me to move to London if I actually move to Australia for a while. And so I took the job, and obviously, the financial, like it financially made sense for me and my family. Oh, that's a good reason, I think. So the next question is, what are the similarities and differences between staying or working in Australia and in the Philippines? Have you ever, uh, before going to Australia, have you um, experienced uh, having a job in the Philippines? And what are the similarities and differences? Yeah, so I've been, as I said, I've been with EY slash SGV for about a decade. Half of that I spent in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, I think, four years uh, experience in the Philippines before I migrated to Australia. Um, they're, like, you know, we're all very friendly um, on the whole, like, you know, by and large. It's, I think, I can't point so much to similarities, but it's probably more on the differences that I could basically think of. From a work perspective, Filipinos are very hierarchical, whereas Australia isn't, where that means you know, boss is boss. Mm -hmm. Like in the Philippines, we are all, you know, we've been taught and trained to respect the elderly or the teacher. So you always put your hand up before you speak. Whereas in Australia, it's not hierarchical. It's like your boss is somewhat a friend. You you bump, with, you bump into your boss in the elevator and you do small talks with him. Whereas in the Philippines, you probably wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. um, they're also very direct. So it's probably going to be hard for you to be living here because if you have bad feedback, they'll directly tell you. Whereas in the Philippines, we try or we tend not to confront. We hate to confront um, other people. Whereas in here, they'll just tell you if you're not doing the right thing, which is actually good because at least you know where you stand. Um, they're a little bit more laid back. Um, it, whereas we're very self-disciplined, I say, like, you know, we're very focused. We're outcome focused, whereas th for them, it's more, and this is probably the somewhat annoying part is that they value confidence because, you know, they've been taught to be confident, to, t to tell you how, like, you know, basically say what they think and what your opinions are, whereas we're, we're not quite that way. Um, so that's what they value. 
and they, that is somewhat annoying <laughs> because mm-hmm. we always tend to focus on the output rather than what we say it's more about what we deliver mm-hmm. yes okay so the next question is have you experienced difficulties within your stay for the past six years in counting have there are differences that made you uh, think also that why am i why am i here in australia or what well there's always um difficulties but i think i adapt quickly anyway as i said it's more that confidence part um where it's not like i think because we don't say how we feel and what we think in meetings um they tend to think or you know australians might think that you don't know what you you don't know what we're talking about because you don't basically share share what you think whereas in the philip because in the philippines you're like if you're not the boss if your boss is speaking you don't actually put your hand up and talk like you wait until they're done or you're just not you know we're, we're trained not to speak up whereas in here they were always they've always been trained to speak up and that might come across as in confidence and therefore you might not get the promotion that you want not because you don't know what you're talking about but because you just can't say it in meetings which they value a lot here Mm-hmm. They value the idea of other or your associates as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So next question is: Do you experience any kind of discrimination from the other nationality? Ah, discrimination is a very heavy word, though. Um, I think that I wouldn't say that it was deliberate. Dis- it was a deliberate discrimination, meaning I don't think that they necessarily discriminate me because I'm Filipino or because that's my color. I'd like to think of it as unintended bias you know we it's natural for us to trust those people who you know to trust and support and buy for the people we talk like and we kind of like the people who looks and talks like us um so there's some unintended unintended bias that comes along the way and i think that's more that than actually trying to discriminate you for who and what you are Okay, next question is, how does it feel to work with different nations? Yeah, it's fine. It's a little bit daunting at the start, but I think my experience in the Philippines um, has prepared me for it. And I've also been in so- like I've also been seconded to the London office for three months before coming to Melbourne, which, you know, at the beginning, I'm always starstruck when I walk in Lo- like you know, in the streets of London. Um, you're like, every- everyone you look at it's like I am Guapa Nila Lahat. But you know, when I moved here because I've had that experience, I'm a little bit more accustomed to that. So it's not as daunting as it would have been. I've also been working with when I was in when I was in S G D back in the day, I was working uh, in like a cross border teaming relationship with uh, where I would serve as Australian counterparts. So I know somewhat know how to work with them, which means that all of those, like when I when I first started in in SGV and I first started dealing with Australians, one of the bigger hurdles for me was the um, accent. When I started working with Australians, it's really difficult to understand what they're bloody saying <laughs> because of the very thick accent. But because I was trained to do that for two years before coming here, the accent wasn't as bad um, as it would have been if I just migrated without that experience. Mm. Okay. So next question is: Does language barrier have a huge impact on you? uh i don't think it's a huge one as i said i might have crossed the barrier a little bit before coming here because of the experience i've had in the philippines so that prepared me quite well um i've always had a good i'd I'd like to say that i've always had a good control of the language like even back in the philippines you know high school elementary and in in the in university i've always understood english quite well and i can actually converse well um in in the language um in terms of barrier i think the difficulty is when you actually talk to someone, you translate it in your head, which means that like you can loading. <laughs> um, that's probably the harder part. Like you know, I'm very good with my written reports. So you know, I excel. I excel like at work here. I excel so well with written reports. But you know, in in conversational English, I think it's it, it's also got something to do with how we structure words, like you know, the val- the subject verb agreement, etc., and how we grammatically structure our sentences. It's a little bit different. So when you actually translate it to English. It doesn't. Your joke does not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> does not. It doesn't <laughs> sound so well <laughs> because of how you translated it. Para wala nasa. Para hindi nasa nakatawa kasi iba siya i translate when you when you say it in English, right? So it's mm-hmm. kind of like that. Um, the conversational flow is a little bit different, um, which means that some of your 
conversations might be a, li- a, bit, a little bit lagging mm-hmm. sometimes. So next question is, what can you say about the experience in migrating to Australia? Ah, overall, I think it's a good one. Um, I know that it's probably not the same for a lot of people. Um, I know for a fact that there's a lot of other Filipinos who finds it really hard to get past the confidence bit. Like you know, when you're when you're when you've always been like that, it's really hard to change how you are. So I know it's it's been a terrible time for them. Like I know a lot of people at at, at EY here who are very good people, very good worker. You know that they're smart, but they just can't get promoted to manager, for example. Because they're not confident enough, and they like it. My my fiance always tells me that I'm the least Filipino Filipino that he knows, <laughs> and he means that in a good way. That I'm more confident than usual. Like you know, if I I'm opinionated, I will tell you how I think. Like even like I might be talking to Australians or whoever, but I'll basically tell you how I feel and what I think. Um, so that's a little bit of an edge for me because I'm normally wired like that. You know, there's a little bit of adjustment but not a huge one but for others who's already shy in the philippines move here um it makes it a little bit harder for them um but yeah so for me i think it's an over it's a it's a good one um i think i have matured a lot both professionally and personally um in my time here so next question is what are some challenges you consider as positive and negative and how do you react to them um i think i've already spoken about the Kind of like the positive and negative challenges that i've had here i think all challenges will have some positive aspect and negative aspect to it my life philosophy you know it's always about moving forward you know if there is something that you haven't done right well it's a learning opportunity right like you know if you get a bad feedback that's a learning opportunity at least you know what you need to change and what you need to work on um if you if it's a positive experience then at least you know what to do next or you know you know some some of the things that that is already good and you can hone um in terms of migrating i know i've, I've all like you know, i'm not saying that it's all it's always been perfect i've had challenges that i can talk about later on um but my philosophy especially like in the overall migration piece and i know there's a lot of like arming and arring other people that like, i know a lot of filipinos are like nagre reklamo bakit ganito bakit ganyan bakit sila ganito bakit kasi yan yung mahalaga sa kanila para hindi naman sila nagtatrabaho wala naman sila output pero sila pa rin yung mm-hmm. pinopromote like you know you can hear a lot of those rants but in my mind i've always lived with a bit of philosophy that i just can't expect people to change for me i'm mm-hmm. i'm the one who made the decision to come here in the first place so in my mind i can't tell my friends this <laughs> but mm-hmm. in my mind sila sabi ko lang sa sarili ko is that ako naman yung pumunta dito wala naman nagpilit hindi naman nila hindi naman ako pinilit ng Australians to come here I'm the one who decided to join them so it's my responsibility to actually adapt like mm-hmm. I can't expect them to actually change how they what, what they value and their overall culture to make way for me because I'm the one who wanted to join them in the first place mm-hmm. okay that's wonderful um, the next question will be is working beyond the borders in the country better than working within your home country Well, as I've, I always say, there's positives and there's negatives. Um, I'll just probably look at the outcome, and I think working abroad worked out better for me and my family. So in this instance, I say that it's you know made way for a better life. Mm-hmm. Next question to me: Do you happen to feel xenophobia while you're there? Nah, not really. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> <laughs> Like I, I don't know. Even back in the Philippines, you know, you mm. could be my professor, you could be the boss. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not attached that much to anyone. No. <laughs> Next question is: What is your unforgettable experience in Australia, both good and bad? Uh, I actually had to think about this one a little bit, <laughs> and in my mind, I was like, how could that be an unforgettable experience if I had to think about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not unforgettable. <laughs> It's probably not that unforgettable if I had to think about it and have to remember. But anyway, what stood out for me though, good good experience, not not like work related, but I was so in awe and I was so happy about this experience and I could never forget about it. It was the first time that I went to the hospital and took my daughter to the hospital. <laughs> so if you don't know, like Australia is a welfare country, so um, healthcare is free. Um, so it's free. Like you literally go to the doctor, provided it's not like a private GP. You don't pay anything. No, even like and then so. If, but the the funny thing is, their public hospital is as good as their pr- private hospital. 
Like there's no difference. Like it's not like in the Philippines. Like you get better just if you go to a private hospital versus and better service versus public. But in here, it's much of a much. It's basically the same. It's just clean ass. You probably get get better doctors in the public system, <laughs> which is a funny thing because they experience more because there's more people coming in, so they'll learn more. Um, so anyway, long story short, went to the doctor, took my daughter after after the um, consultation. The doctor is like, okay, you're done. And I'm like, okay. And then I just walked out because he didn't say anything. And I was like, what? <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. And then so what I did next was I went to the front desk and I had to ask the nurse, like the reception, the nurse, whatever. I went, I, I queued, There's, there was a queue. And then I waited. And then when I got there, I was like, um, I've seen the doctor. And it was like, she was like, okay. And I was like, yeah, I've seen the doctor. He didn't give me any more instruction. What do I do next? Mm-hmm. And he was like, what do you mean? What do you do next? You go home. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I mean, where do I pay? I haven't paid yet. And I was like, what do you mean? Where do-? She was more confused than I am for asking where I should pay because paying in hospitals is not a thing in, the, in, in Australia. But I was like, oh, I don't have to pay anything? And she was like, no, it's like, oh, sorry, I'm from the Philippines. I don't know. And she was like, mm-hmm. oh, well, this is the beauty of a universal healthcare system. <laughs> so that no. was a very positive experience for her. <laughs> um, unforgettable experience. <laughs> yeah, like you don't have to pay anything. You basically walk into the hospital, go to the doctor, and then not pay anything. Um, on the bad experience, um, the most unforgettable bad experience at work that I could think of was when I did not get the promotion I thought I deserved. So, like, so as I was saying, it's never it, it it wasn't all smooth for me. So when I when I moved in here, um, I I went and moved in as a as a senior accountant. Um, I then paid assistant manager, and usually you stay you stay as an assistant manager for a year, and then you get promoted to manager. Um, I didn't get the promotion, and that is because, or I think that's mostly because of the confidence bit that they probably don't think you're confident enough because mm-hmm. you don't talk. I talk, but it's more perception. Um, and the business unit that I was a part of before was very white and rich people mm-hmm. <laughs> business unit. Um, so I was very, I was devastated by that because I thought I was working, I was working a lot harder than others. Um, yet I didn't get a promotion. But then what I learned, but I got lucky because someone, I, I worked with another department, the senior manager loved me. So he asked me to move over to his department and then I got the promotion six months mm-hmm. um, thereafter. So I only had like a six month bump down the road, but I have to be proactive about it to actually do something. Um, but yeah, that's the that's a difficulty that I was talking about in terms of the cultural differences um, where you might be working so hard, but that's not really, the mm. uh, important like that's not that's not the most important thing for them so y- you might think that you're doing well but you probably isn't um mm. so i was proactive about it and i moved to another business unit and got the pro- promotion eventually but that in but, but that involves a little bit of rebranding mm-hmm. so i think for side for me was in my old business unit because i moved in from the philippines they view me as someone from sgv or someone from we call it ATH was a business like th- that was a cross border demon. So when I moved to that business unit, my brand or they would think of me as someone who moved from the Philippines. So oh, she's a senior from ATH. She's a senior from the Philippines. When I move over to the next department, they'll think of me as a transfer from this other Australian department. So perception might have changed a little bit because of it. So I think mm-hmm. in career and in life or like in career and not just here. It's it's also it also holds true in the Philippines that. Like they're saying about branding and perception, and you have to be able to, like, you know, be proactive and craft a way to rebrand yourself mm-hmm. to make it to the next level. Mm-hmm. That was really uh, devastating uh, happening. But at least I think that whenever you did not get something, there is always a better uh, next one for you. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So the next question would be uh, what is the lesson that you learned from my great? Uh, the best one is probably through independence. You know, when you migrate to another country, you have to be to learn how to be independent. You'll be independent eventually when you mature, even back in the even in your home country. But when you're here, moved by yourself, you have to be able to stand on your own. Um, even simple things as, you know, when you're when you're sick, no one's gonna take care of you. So you know, you should learn how to take care of yourself. Um, you have to be able to manage your own finances because no one's gonna bail you out if you are short <laughs> um, with cash, if you're strapped for cash. So you know those things that you probably wouldn't learn 
um, as quickly if you live with your family and you know you have a bit of cushion around you. Um, I also learned how to cook. <laughs> That's a great thing. <laughs> I moved. I moved to Australia with, you know, not knowing how to cook any dishes other than frito. <laughs> and now I can cook anything. I can bake. I can paint. Um, so what's your specialty now? Oh, I don't know. Too many. I <laughs> more recently. Uh, I co. I'm more recent. Uh, so I've been baking. So Sabel knows I can bake a cake. I can bake cupcake. I can do brownies. I can bake all that. Um, the more recent things that I've been making, um, I made pizza from scratch, like you know, with dough and everything. Like I have, papa al sayin yung sarili kong dough and all that. And last weekend, I also made ravioli, uh, like it's a pasta dish with spinach and ricotta inside. And I made my own pasta by hand. So <laughs> it's really delicious, and it's really hard to uh, make or create a pizza out of or from scratch. It's really hard. To make. That's very nice. Okay. okay, so the last question would be, uh, if you were given the chance to choose, would you stay there or go back to the Philippines? Oh, well, I'm still here, so I probably chose to stay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, you know, under a different circumstance, I might decide. Like, I'm not saying I'm not going to go back, like, ever. Um, there's definitely a lot of good things in Australia. As I said, healthcare, it's welfare. I get paid really well here. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Provided I get pay the same amount of money <laughs> or you know good really good career prospects maybe i would if i would go home if because i always thought with idea i might go home if i can get a job where i afford to live in a condo unit in makati uh-huh. and get paid the same amount of money that you're that you're being paid right now yes <laughs> Okay, right, so uh, before we end uh, the small talk, uh, this is the last one, uh, the really final one. Uh, what can you say about transnationalism and migration? Well, migration is a really good thing, um, I think. Like, you know, there's a lot of people who made it, like, it's not like Sabel knows or Jesse Bell knows, we're not rich by any means, uh, but we became rich. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 that was a joke. <laughs> We're not rich. I think it. I think. <laughs> but, 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 but I mean, you know, we improved our quality of life because of the opportunity that I've got moving to Australia. Which it'll probably be, take me so much time to get to this mm-hmm. point. If had I stayed in the Philippines, um, mm-hmm. to give you some perspective, when I moved to, from the Philippines to Australia, I got paid ten times more. <laughs> That's really it. Like. <laughs> So, you know, I, I probably wouldn't be able to pay for Jezebel's university or my mom's, like, you know, everything else, like, I wouldn't be able to afford had I not moved. So, you know, the migra- migration and ability to migrate is, is a really good thing for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think it's a wrap, and thank you very much for giving us your time and letting us um, interview or ask you some questions. So, thank you very much. Thank no you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs>